How's it guys, this is Davey FPL and welcome back to the Fantasy Premier League video here on my channel. Now in this video, I'm going to take you guys through my very own team selection for the upcoming Game Week 7. So in terms of Game Week 7, it seemed like it might be a pretty boring Game Week for my own team I was looking to use two free transfers, so they thought it was a little bit more exciting, but then boom, news drops that Crystal Palace vs Brighton has been postponed for Game Week 8. So that might not be for the upcoming game week, game week 7, but game week 8 is just on the horizon and a lot of us are actually looking to bring in Brighton assets or own a few of their options. So I'll be addressing that in the transfer plan, don't worry, we're going to talk about all the good stuff, all those talking points later on. I'm going to start off the video like we usually do, a quick review of game week 6. Now I do a more in-depth analysis in my transfer plan, so if you guys want a more in-depth review, go check that video out, but in this video I'm going to go through it quite quickly. I'm then going to move on to my transfer plan where one transfer has actually been locked in. So if you guys are watching this video as of release, you might be able to get that transfer as well. And then I'm going to go on to the actual team selection for context before we talk about my plan for the future. So that's something you guys are interested in. Sit back, relax, and let's get straight into it. So going on to the quick review of Game Week 6, drop it in the comments down below. How many points did you guys end on? You guys can see on the bottom right hand side, 35 points with a Game Week rank of 8.5 million. So yes, a Game Week rank of 8.5 million. Luckily, there are 10 plus million managers in the Prem at the moment because a couple of seasons ago, I probably would have had the worst Game Week rank in the world. But 35 points, something to be proud of. And unfortunately, it was going to be a red arrow from about 1 million to 1.7 million. So kind of a step forward, two steps back. But at least in the upcoming game weeks, can hopefully rebound from this and get some green arrows. Then the bottom right, two chances for the upcoming game week and 0 0.8 in the bank. Let me know how you guys got on and did you actually get a massive green arrow as the majority of people I've actually seen on the template have got reds. Starting off on our bench, I think I should talk about here Andres Pereira and Danny Ward both getting two points. And then Diallo, unfortunately, didn't start for Southampton. Well, I actually think he did. Played 55 minutes, but also got a yellow card. So that's going to take him to zero points. Then Archer on zero points, who's currently injured, but also might actually be loaned out. Going on to our starting 11 and the big talky point of this game week. Right now, this transfer looks absolutely terrible because I did take Ramsdale out with one of my free transfers and I brought in Sanchez. Now, if you guys watched my team selection last week, I was deciding between Sanchez and Nick Pope. And so what happens? Nick Pope gets a 12-pointer and currently the Brighton game next week is going to be postponed. So not the best moment, but I guess if we did have news about that potential postponement, we would have gone for Nick Pope and then we might actually have got a green arrow. But right now we are stuck with Sanchez and you know what that means. If we're not going to use a transfer on a goalkeeper, we're going to have to play Danny Ward in goal. Moving on to our back line, and I first want to apologize for this hideous sight that you guys can see on your screens right now. So yes, my defensive department, the big at the back formation, once again didn't return. Trent with one point, Cancelo Walker with two, and then Kukurela and James, the double up with also two points totaled. So to say the big at the back formation was a failure would be an understatement over these prior game weeks. And it just seems to be that the clean sheets aren't there, but also the attacking returns have dried up. But don't worry though, on our wild card, which will be quickly approaching, we'll probably change this formation and go for a three or four at the back. Go on to midfield apartment, Salah and Diaz both hit the woodwork against Everton, but no attacking returns came from them, and both of them ended on three points. Martinelli actually scored against United, but it was ruled offside for a prior foul from Odegaard, and that actually was a little bit controversial. I personally thought, as soon as I saw the replay, that it was going to be a foul and called back, but it would have been nice to at least have some points from the Arsenal man. But saying that though, Smith Rowe actually picked up an injury apparently in the cooldown from that United game, so Martinelli looks nailed in that starting eleven. Then go on to our forward line, pick the right Cam C option this week. Imagine if I did go for Salah, it would have been an even worse game week. Captain Haaland got 9 points, double to 18, so super happy about that decision. But I do think Haaland might actually be a perma captain for the foreseeable future, as he just seems to be on red out form in the Prem and also the Champions League. Then final, Gabriel Jesus, a one point appearance. At least I didn't go for that Cam C because he was a kind of outside punt. But I don't think many people would have actually captained him against United. Now, I think some people are actually losing patience with Jesus, and that's why Haaland's ownership has actually overtaken the Brazilians. If you guys have watched my wildcard draft videos or my kind of ultimate guide to the wildcard for my Game Week 9 wildcard draft, you guys would have actually seen that I went without Jesus in both of them. So overall, as I mentioned, 35 points, a red arrow to 1.7 million. Let me know in the comments down below how you got on, because you're probably higher ranked than myself. Now, the first talking point I want to go over before we go on to the transfer plan and the team selection is going to be the wild card. So, yes, when am I actually going to wild card? And the reason I want to discuss this is that I do feel like your guys' wild card plan is integral to whatever transfer plan you guys go for. So, if you guys are wild card in game week eight, now that the Brighton game has been called off 100%, that's fine. Game week nine, so on and so forth. Just make sure that you have that penciled in so that you do adjust your transfer plan. 
So right now, if you guys watched my kind of wildcard guide yesterday, I'm currently planning on using the wildcard in game week 9, and therefore my transfer plan has been adjusted for that. Now in terms of the Brighton cancellation, it hasn't really changed my mind too much because I only own Sanchez from that game, but I can't understand it if you guys have a triple up already and therefore want a wildcard earlier. So in terms of my own team, game week 9, but comment down below when you guys are wildcarding and has this Brighton news actually changed your mind? But now going on to our transfer plan, and as mentioned in the kind of introduction to this video, one transfer has already been locked in, and that's going to be for Kyle Walker out. Now in terms of replacements, I could have gone for someone like a Lewis Dunk, but I've actually gone for Trippier from Newcastle. So seeing this kind of postponement now, I'm super happy that I went without Dunk, but the only reason I actually moved for Trippier was that he was projected to rise in price. That price rise never came, so if you guys are watching this video, he hasn't risen in price, you guys can simply do this move, as I do think it's worth it for the next two fixtures. Now what kind of took this over the edge for me was the fact that Kyle Walker is currently injured. Pep Guardiola came out and said that he doesn't really know when he's going to return. Could be a doubt for this weekend against Spurs. But even if he was going to play on the weekend, I do think that's a bad fixture. So I kind of just needed that excuse to take Kyle Walker out with his kind of 8 point ceiling for an option that I feel has a better chance of FPL points. That player was obviously going to be Trippier. Fixtures are coming against West Ham away, which is a little bit of a tough one for Game Week 7. But that Game Week 8 fixture against Bournemouth at home looks simply outstanding. Newcastle, a team in form at the current moment. Trippier looks strong. Chance creations off the charts on set pieces. Direct free kicks. What more can you guys kind of ask for? So this transfer was locked in, and I'm pretty sure you guys can agree with me that at least over Lewis Dunk, Trippier looks like the better option. So taking that transfer into account, you can see I've updated the kind of team selection bottom right hand side. Only one free transfer left for game week 7 and 0.6 in the bank. Now we'll be discussing the plans for next game week and this game week with that free transfer. So just stay tuned for that. But going on to my current team selection for game week 7. And the reason I want to post this is just to give you guys some context on what I'm currently dealing with and how the team is currently set out. So going on to our bench, the bench pretty much picks itself. Ward, I'm not going to start in a terrible defense. Andreas Pereira against Chelsea at home, not going to play him there. Although I do expect Mitrovic to actually score there. So maybe Andreas can get some attacking returns. Diallo, I'm not going to play him because he might not start. Then finally, Archer is currently still injured in my opinion. But now going on to our starting 11, and obviously Sanchez is still going to be between the sticks for us. That Bournemouth away game, I actually do think this might be a tougher game than people are expecting. Brighton are a very strong defense, but who kind of knows what's happening behind the scenes. The rumor is that uh, Potter's going to sign for Chelsea, maybe even on the day that I'm releasing this video. So just stay tuned for that. But generally, I don't think it's going to affect Brighton too much. So just hope that maybe Brighton keep a clean sheet. I'm hoping for a boring game if I bring in no other Brighton attackers. Go on to our back five system. So yes, I still do have a back five. I know old habits are hard to kill, but at the end of the day, most of my defense have good fixtures. That's going to start off with Trent Alexander Arnold, our first defender, with a fixture against Wolves at home. Now at Anfield, I do always prefer Liverpool. I just generally think most sides play better at home, but generally Liverpool are a different animal at Anfield. Now Wolves have also been struggling from an attacking point of view. Defensively, they've been a little bit assured. Actually, I think in the top five for XG conceded over these opening couple of game weeks. So I do think Trent's clean sheet odds are quite strong. The same can't be said for our next defender, Cancelo. I think that Spurs game is going to be a tough one. The only thing that's good about it is that it is at the Etihad, but Spurs always generally do well against Man City. Now, there's been a big talking point about Cancelo, which we saw last night in the Champions League, and that was the fact that the new signing Gomez started at left back, and therefore Cancelo could be on the right. Now, Cancelo at right back is a whole different story. Great attacking stats going forward, and generally just plays better in the position that he favors. So let's just hope if Walker's out injured or something like that, that Cancelo might start at right back for the foreseeable future, because that'll be great for our team. Next up is going to be Trippier. Not much to talk about with him. Already mentioned him on the transfer plan. Tough fixture against West Ham away, but they are playing on Thursday in the European competition, so they might be a little bit tired. But Trippier is basically in here for game week 8 anyway. That Bournemouth home fixture is too hard to ignore, and that's how I brought in the English fullback. But the expectations from our defensive department have kind of gone from good to now bad because the next double up is going to be from Chelsea, Reese James, and then also Cucurella. Now, Cucurella didn't start last night in the Champions League, and therefore I do expect him to play on the weekend as Ben Shaw's fitness is currently not up to scratch. But as mentioned with Brighton, who kind of knows? New manager is going to take over. Is it a caretaker? Will Cucurella even start? Reese James start? The whole situation's up in the air. I'm just hoping that both of them do play at left wing back and right wing back. But Mitrovic is probably going to spoil the party anyways, so let's just get this game week over with, and on a wild card, we can ditch some of these Chelsea defenders. Moving on to our midfoot apartment, we have Mo Salah and then also Luis Diaz against Wolves. I mentioned with Trent that Wolves are better defensive than attacking side, so I don't really think this game is going to be super high scoring, but if both these two assets start, I'll be considered quite lucky now that Jota, Darwin, and Firmino are in rotation. But let's see what happens tonight, but let's talk about that in the transfer plan later on. Then moving on to Martinelli, a consistent option, great fixture on paper. I do think Everton will put up a fight against Arsenal, but they've been playing pretty well at the current moment. XG looks strong, and Martinelli should be in that starting eleven. 
Then on to our four department, Haaland against Spurs. I mean, what more needs to be said about the Norwegian? Scoring in basically every single game looks unstoppable. And if you guys don't own him or not going to capture him, that Man City game is probably going to be a skip. Now, this will be a tough game for Man City, but if it is quite open, quite high scoring, then Haaland can always get a massive haul. And then finally, Jesus, not going to sell him before Everton at home. Great fixture on paper. Just need him to get back on the more consistent way of things, like he was in the prior game weeks. But overall, as you guys can see, the team generally looks quite strong. But when you look a little bit deeper, if Luis Diaz starts tonight in the Champions League, who kind of knows? Cucurella, James, that defense looks atrocious. And if Everton put up a fight against Arsenal, we might be in trouble for another game week. So post-production day, we're going to hop on this track because like last week, I yet again forgot to talk about my captain for this week. And like last week, it's still going to be on Mo Salah. So I might not have ended the game week on Mo Salah. I went actually for Haaland in the deadline stream. And that's pretty much what's going to happen in this game week. Right now, I'm going for the captain that I had at the start of game week six. And that was going to be Mo Salah. I just favor the fixture. But when looking at the stats, we have kind of defense versus attack. So XG conceded versus XG. The XG conceded of Wolves is going to be worse than Spurs. But the XG of Man City is better than Liverpool. So kind of timing those two together, we add an even 50-50. So right now, as mentioned, going to be on Salah, but come that Game Week 7 deadline in the deadline stream, it probably will be on Haaland because right now it's a 50-50 for me. Comment down below who you guys are captaining. It's probably going to be Haaland at the end of the day though. So now let's see how I can improve the squad going into Game Week 7. So the first trance I want to talk about is going to kind of hinge on the Liverpool lineup tonight. I'm recording this before the Liverpool game. They are taking on Napoli, so that's going to be quite a tough game on paper. But my expectation about Luis Diaz is that if he does start tonight, he might be benched on the weekend. My reasoning behind that is now that Jota, Darwin and Firmino are back in the rotation. Luis Diaz deserves a game off and that might come in game week 7. So let's just say that Diaz is going to be out. I'm going to stick with my original plan. So basically this was before the Brighton vs Crystal Palace game was postponed and I still could generally go with this. So my transfer plan originally was to take Diaz out for Gross from Brighton. Now Gross, Trossard, whatever you guys want to go for 100%. I just wanted to go for Gross for a future move that I'll talk about next. Now obviously that Crystal Palace game at home has been postponed. When it's going to be postponed to who kind of knows. But currently it looks like it's going to be the next half of the season according to Ben Krellen. Now the thing about the Brighton assets is I don't really want that postponement to put me off them because Bournemouth away is a simply outstanding fixture. But I think generally in terms of the kind of rules of FPL, it's ever good to bring in a player that's going to blank the next game week and is Bournemouth kind of good enough for two fixtures. So as I said, this is my current original plan to go for and I still could go for it if Diaz is going to play tonight, probably think he's going to be rotated, but I don't know exactly what to do with Gross because he has actually blank in game week 8. Now the reason I was actually going to stick to this plan was because in game week 8 I wanted to make one free transfer so please this is not going to be for a minus for hit I'm not going to make three transfers this week this is going to be for next week and actually it was going to involve Archer out. Now you guys can probably understand or predict what I'm going to be doing here it's going to be Archer out for Mitrovic. So I have about 0.3 in the bank after this move so according to price rises if Mitrovic goes up I can still afford this and that's why I wanted to go for Gross over Trossard. Now Mitrovic against Nottingham Forest is a massive haul in my opinion and that's why I wanted to actually do this move before we wildcard in game week 9. But the nice thing about going for Gross is that I could actually go for Mitrovic or Isaac. So between these two, both have great fixtures. Mitrovic against Nottingham Forest away, Isaac against Bournemouth at home. It's a little bit of a 50-50 there because I do think Isaac is a more risk of expected minutes, whereas Mitrovic is going to play 90, but probably against a slightly better defense. It is debatable though, Bournemouth, Nottingham Forest, who's the worst defense? The stats probably say Nottingham Forest, but they have played some tough opposition. So that's why I actually went for Gross over Trossard because that gives me flexibility. I go for Mitrovic or Isaac, whichever player I do prefer come game week 8, but this is my original transfer plan. So this has kind of been thrown up in the air because of that postponement of Brighton to Crystal Palace, but I still could do this move. But now let's kind of reset. I showed you my original transfer plan. Let's go on to one that's a little bit more modular, a little bit more dynamic, and a little bit more punty. So let's just say that we don't want to go for Gross because of that postponement doesn't plan game week 8. I just want to use one free transfer this week. Trippier in, that's already been done. And then I take two transfers into game week 8, and I kind of dead end my team before the wild card. I say dead end because my main transfer out probably will be Mo Salah out before Chelsea away. Now, I know that's absolutely mental, probably a season ago, you'd have called me an absolute crazy man, but this season Mo Salah simply has not been up to scratch, is actually playing relatively well, but not good enough for that price tag. So let's just say we want to take a punt going into game week 8, where well, there's not a team to punt on more than Manchester United. Now I'll be going over two transfer plans, the first one is going to revolve around Bruno Fernandes. So I know that Bruno, not the best f asset over the last season, this season, but I do think at his price point, probably the most nailed man United attacker to actually get. Now this could obviously be Sancho or Rashford or if I want to kind of go for, but this plan is going to revolve around Fernandez. Now I might not captain Fernandez, I might still go with Haaland, but I probably won't captain Mo Salah against Chelsea away anyways. So what this move allows me to do is it frees enough money up in the bank to do the previous move I just spoke about. And that's going to be Archer to Mitrovic. 
Now this could also be Isaac, I have enough in the bank to actually do that move. So this move still gives me that flexibility of going for either of them. But as mentioned early on, let's just say I want to go for Rashford. Well that opens up a whole other move because obviously Rashford is a lot cheaper than Bruno Fernandes. Now the thing about Rashford is please just watch out for that injury news, has not been pictured in training, but come that press conference on Friday, we might get some suggestions that he will be back for game week 8. Now that fixture against Leeds is one of the fixtures that I would definitely target, United are playing a very nice brand of football, Leeds look leaky at the back, and that should be a perfect combination for FPL points. Now as mentioned with Rashford, because he is cheaper, this allows me to do a move that might be slightly more punty, and that's going to be Archer to Harry Kane. Now I know this move might be absolutely mental, you guys might be looking at me like what am I absolutely doing for game week 8, but honestly I do think Harry Kane against Leicester is the best Campsy option in game week 8. Now is that worth kind of going into the effective ownership of Haaland, who kind of knows, but come game week 8 maybe if you think Haaland's going to be rotated, Harry Kane's the perfect alternative captain. So what I'm doing here is I'm dropping Mo Salah, who I won't captain anyways, for a United asset against Leeds, and also a potential Campsy option, Harry Kane. So I won't lie to you guys, kind of taking two tree transfers into game week 8 looks quite exciting. I think we can take some massive differential punts, hopefully get us a nice green arrow before we wildcon in game week 9. But I was kind of spitballing here, I was just putting my ideas out to you guys. Let me know in the comments down below what you guys think. Would you still bring in grass before postponement in game week 8? Or would you kind of take two free transfers into game week 8 and take one of these punts on a Kane or maybe a Fernandez? Let me know what you think in the comments down below. But this is basically up for the video guys, hope you did enjoy it, please don't forget to like if you didn't and subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. Enjoy the Champions League tonight or yesterday when you guys are watching this video and hopefully we'll see you guys in the deadline stream coming up one hour before the deadline on Saturday. But I'm Yusano with the Navy FPL and I'm out, cheers, bye.